Hot dogs, which dog types have the highest risk of heat related illness in the UK? We have no conflict of interest to disclose, but this project was supported by a Dogs Trust Canine Welfare Grant. Affiliation wise, Anne and I both teach at Nottingham Trent and Dan's a senior lecturer at the RVC and we'd just like to take this opportunity to thank BSAVA for allowing us to share the preliminary findings from our hot dogs research project. So what is heat related illness? Um, it's important to start just by clarifying that this is actually a relatively poorly defined condition in both people and animals. And traditionally we use the human terms, which are shown on the slide here, and a lot of them rely upon the patient actually reporting their symptoms, how they're feeling, what they're experiencing. And you'll notice certainly for heat stroke, there is quite a reliance on measuring core temperature. So Yamamoto et al have proposed a different definition for heat related illness. In fact, they've proposed heat related illness. So they have suggested this should be considered as a progressive disorder rather than categorizing patients into heat stress versus heat exhaustion versus heat stroke. We should simply be thinking of them as having various stages of heat related disease. And a patient with stage one could easily progress to stage two or stage three if they continue to experience exposure to heat or continue exercising or don't receive a appropriate treatment. And this staging system that they've proposed has been tested in human hospitals and been found to be more accurate than the original traditional terms, certainly in terms of effectively triaging and predicting outcomes for patients. So in the canine literature, most of the studies are focusing on heat stroke um, and with the problems that we've seen in people, the definition of heat stroke relying on core temperature can miss patients who've been called before they arrive. Additionally, the canine heat stroke literature tends to be from referral or teaching hospitals. And as has been highlighted previously, that can introduce bias towards extreme patients and obviously the owners who can afford referral. From this literature, we know that case fatality ranges from 36 to 50% in dogs, there are certain breeds that have been proposed to be at higher risk, but we have no incident estimates at a population level and nothing except for case studies coming from the UK. So that's why I started researching heat related illness and this is why I've used the Vet Compass project. So nearly 18 and a half million animals are catalogued within the Vet Compass database, nearly 5 billion treatment records and over one and a half billion clinical notes. We are talking big data. So we use the Vet Compass database using de-identified patient records. We only use records from primary care veterinary practices, so there's no referral data in here. And for this study, all of the dogs had to be under care during 2016. So we only looked at events that occurred during 2016 for this study. Crucially, when using Vet Compass, you have the entire picture of the patient. You get their clinical notes, you get charged items, so treatments they may have received, and you get follow up. So it is possible to estimate fatality using the Vet Compass database. So all in all, this study resulted in a denominated population of 905,543 dogs, so quite a few. And we particularly focused on breed, age, body weight and sex neuter. We also looked at skull shape and that was determined by the listed breed and we looked at body weight relative to breed sex mean using the vet compass population. So it's important just to note that if we're aware that the UK dog population are on the fat side, um, then the mean that's come from the vet compass population will also be on the heavy side. So an animal that is overweight compared to the vet compass population mean is very overweight. They're the search terms we used and again we only looked at dogs affected during 2016 and where dogs had more than one event we only used the first one for the study event. Our case definition 
had to be quite loose because <clears throat> there is no definitive definition for heat related illness in terms of a diagnostic test. We included all stages and I think that's really important to stress. So whereas previous veterinary studies have focused at the heat stroke end, we made the conscious decision to include everything from heat stress right up to heat stroke. So in human terms, right from stage one to stage three. And this is partly because there are no clear definitions of the different stages of heat related illness in dogs. So we felt it was important to include all of them. And they were our case definitions up on the slide there. Analysis wise, we used univariable then multivariable binary logistic regression and we used manual backward stepwise elimination, rightly or wrongly. Results, our overall estimated period incidence for 2016 was 0.04%. So this isn't happening a lot. And to put that into relative terms, that's one in every two and a half thousand dogs developing some form of heat related illness. So it's not common. The overall estimated prevalence, however, was 0.14%. Um, so that was taking all heat related illness occurrences in the dog's lifetime record. So that included events that happened pre-2016 and post. Obviously, we had some very hot weather in 2018. The figure here shows the breed incidents of 2016. And you'll see at the bottom there, the Chow Chow, the Bulldog, the French Bulldog. Crucially, though, the Labrador was not significantly different in terms of incidence compared to non-designer crossbreeds. So whereas previously the Labrador has been identified as an at-risk breed for heat-related illness, we didn't find that in our study. So our results, multivariable results, are taking into account body weight and age. The breeds with the greatest odds compared to the Labrador with Chow Chow, pictured here, pretty much sums up why. Um, the Bulldog, unsurprisingly, with 14 times the odds of heat related illness compared to the Labrador. French Bulldog, Dog de Bordeaux, all brachycephalic breeds, and then the Greyhound. There's another couple up there, the Springer Spaniel, the Golden Retriever, who we potentially weren't expecting to see. And we don't fully understand why they're there. Working theories include greyhounds experiencing laryngeal paralysis as they get older. We know that Springer Spaniels can suffer from exercise related hypothermia and Golden Retrievers have a big thick coat compared to a Labrador. So that could well explain them. But Crucially, we've identified these dogs as having a significantly increased odds of heat related illness compared to the lab. Body weight, unsurprisingly, dogs at or above the relative breed sex mean had an increased odds, not huge, only 1.4. But it's important to note that from the data we had available to us, we couldn't tell whether these oversized dogs were simply fat or actually huge. So on the far left there is Hendrix, it's one of Anne's dogs, um, and they are his litter mates. And even though he's sat in the foreground, you can tell he's a good couple of kilos heavier than his litter pals. And certainly we know from previous work in greyhounds that um, dogs with a greater lean muscle mass do get hotter when exercising compared to lighter dogs. So it's not possible for us to say whether it's simply obesity. It's likely, but it's not possible for us to, to confirm that from this study. Multivariable results skull wise, again, unsurprisingly, brachycephalics were around two times, had two times the odds of heat related illness compared to mesocephalic dogs. Interestingly, we didn't see any protection in dolichocephalic dogs, so they weren't at significantly reduced odds compared to mesos. But brachycephalic designer crossbreeds were not quite significantly, but certainly had lower odds compared to their purebred brachycephalic counterparts. And it's unsurprising when we look at their skull shape, when you think about the significantly reduced nasal turbinate area they have for effective cooling. Body weight as a pure variable, all the dogs greater than 10 kilos had at least two times the odds of dogs under 10 kilos. And when we think about that in terms of thermodynamics, then having a relatively low um, body weight to surface area ratio certainly helps with heat dissipation. Fatality. So our overall fatality rate for 2016, and remembering that this was all stages of heat related illness, everything from stage one, quite mild up to severe, was 14.2%. That's one in seven of these dogs went on to die as a result of their heat related illness. 
the majority were euthanized, but around about a third experienced an unassisted death, so they died without interventions being effective. So what? Firstly, it is getting hotter. Um, I don't think any of us can have failed to notice this. Last year we had a heat wave in February um, and July was the hottest July on record ever. Every year we seem to be breaking more temperature records and just this month there have been papers warning of the threat to humans from increasing mean average temperatures across the globe. But also the canine population are becoming more extreme and as they become more extreme they're potentially more at risk. So certainly we know levels of obesity are increasing but also extremes of obesity are increasing. But extreme size is also becoming more and more popular. Our giant breed dogs, but also our very small dogs. Finally, skull shape. The more extreme brachycephalic dogs become, potentially the more at risk they become. So we really do need to be having discussions with owners before they get dogs to highlight which ones are potentially suited to certain climates. So what's our take home message? The crucial thing is educating owners of at-risk dogs. So identifying those key breeds, acknowledging them and having the discussion with the owner about their animal's risk of heat related illness. Certainly having read thousands of veterinary records within the Vet Compass database, we're already very good at doing this with brachycephalic owners. Plenty of booster records had a note saying discussed increased risk of heat stress with owner. But oversized patients, I think it's potentially another tool in our armory when discussing obesity, if we can highlight to owners that it puts their dog at risk. And when we consider that risk is one in seven of dogs with heat related illness dying as a result of that condition, then that risk becomes really quite serious. In the, my next abstract, we're going to discuss why dogs overheat but if you've got any questions my email's at the bottom there and the references that we used in this presentation are listed here thank you very much for listening